everybody. Uh, today we're doing low poly design on Photoshop. And so uh, we're gonna discuss what is low poly. Uh, so hopefully what I want you guys to learn today, your objectives are to understand what low poly art is and why it's nostalgic with a, a certain crowd. And then uh, hopefully understand Photoshop tools and tricks just get our grasp a little bit better with you know knowing those tools and whatnot uh, or two in particular that I want to talk about are the polygonal lasso and the blur filter so uh, we go back to uh, what is low poly art well it's short for low polygon art and you see it a lot in video games and uh, uh, illustrations and this, this style of art favors uh, straightforward colors and geometry over details and lifelike realism so if you guys you guys were too young probably to remember the dire straits money for nothing video but when it came out it was groundbreaking because it was you know computer animated but now today it's just a joke because of how far the polygonal uh, uh, advances have, have taken place within the realm of graphics and visual stuff I mean all the stuff you see nowadays is just so lifelike but back then it was like whoa it was looked cool because it looked different and uh, so that's why there's a, a nostalgia for that it just reminds us that you know uh, we're still human we're not machines and uh, we can simplify things so what are polygons you ask they are 2d geometric figures and this is the exact uh, telling of what I was talking about, how the computer graphics in the late 80s, early 90s kind of looked like this, and then they just progressively gotten better through the years, especially with the, the way they wire mesh all the uh, visual graphics in movies. But anyways, I could go on and on about that. So like, you can see it right here with Laura Croft and her original design and how she's evolved. So the operative word is nostalgia. So when you see these spiky edges and blocky textures, it takes us back through the decades. So uh, when we start creating our low poly art, first we need to find a good reference photo. And then, uh, I don't worry about the shape and all that, but we need to find a photo that, that's gonna interest you and motivate you to do this. So uh, you go to Google Images and make sure it's large when you when you look at it see this one's it's close to a thousand pixels wide you don't want to get anything small so if you go to tools and size large it'll help you with that and it'll make sure they're nice and big so once you have it go ahead and right click on it uh, and then go to copy image and then we're going to go open up photoshop go to file new you probably want to type in your low poly art and then your name right there and then if you look at the width and the height you want it to be kind of in that range but you definitely want to change the resolution to 300 so put 300 right there and then hit create and then we're going to edit paste and then there's your nice big image. Resolution's already taken care of. So the first thing we need to do is, let's get rid of this background. So we're gonna click on that and to unlock it and then just hit backspace on our keyboard. So that frees up a little space. Now I wanna remove this background, but keep him. So here's how you're gonna do that. Uh, if you have a subject that you want or a, a background you want to remove you want to find the polygonal lasso tool this is perhaps my favorite tool in the Photoshop tool arsenal it's if you know how to use it properly it can be a, a really good tool uh, for cutting out people so I'm gonna go find the polygonal lasso tool and I'm gonna zoom in with the zoom tool so that means I have to go back to the polygonal lasso tool I want to be in about this this close so I can see the the edge really good go back to my polygonal lasso tool now I'm going to start right here at the top and just click 
and then every time I click it sets a little anchor point now if you want to be nice and precise that's how you do it but this is a low poly art so you can be a little jagged and it's fine so while you're zoomed in if you hold down the space bar it brings up this little hand right here and allows you to push while still being in the polygonal lasso tool and you can select around uh, the hair or whatever you're selecting around while you're still zoomed in that's that's a really handy shortcut to remember so while you're zoomed in using this tool you just hold down the space bar see hand pops up drag 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 let go of the space bar and we're back to the polygonal lasso tool so i'm going to go ahead and click around this body and when i get down to here if you have something like this comes up for your subject i'm going to click down here hold down the space bar drag over and click right below where i need to come back up so i clicked and then click again around the rest of the body on this side if you have something that is similar to what I'm going through. Otherwise, just go around the whole body. So same thing right here. I'm just gonna keep clicking right here. Click up, hold down the space bar, click up, and then start back right where it is, and then continue along to outline around the subject. All right, so when you get close to where you started, and I'm still clicking, holding down the space bar, click, 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 hold down the space bar, and then I, when I get close to the original one, I just double click, and it completes the circuit. So then you get a view, fit on screen, your control zeros to see, okay, these all cut out. Now, if I hit backspace right now, don't hit backspace. It erases him. So I want to inverse this. So you're going to go up to select, inverse, and then you're going to hit backspace. Select, deselect. All right, now you're ready to start. And you're going to zoom in. It doesn't matter where. We'll start with the face. holding down the space bar. And then you're gonna grab the polygonal lasso tool and you're just gonna start, I see like a little chunk right here and it's, it's you're gonna keep it very angular like this. Almost, you kinda of want triangles. If you can do triangles, that's even better. Uh, uh, triangles are just really, really good polygons like this. And then after you do that, you're gonna go up here to filter and you're gonna go down to blur and you're gonna choose average. What that does is it just averages the color for that little section. Now then you're gonna keep continuing with your selection tool and hopefully it's on just new selection right there. Just do one selection at a time. So then we're gonna go right next to it. Click, 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 double click, filter, and it's right there at the very top, average. Now, instead of going up here to filter average every time, remember this shortcut. Whatever's right there, so we have a PC, so it's gonna be Alt, Control F, and I believe on a, a Mac it's just Control F. But you hit Alt, Control F every time, and you don't have to go up here to filter every time. So here's what I'm talking about. I'm gonna do my next one, click, 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 clickety click, and then Control Alt F, done. And I'll start right here. Click, 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 double click, Control Alt F, and then keep going where I need to click. I'm trying to keep this diamond shape going. Control Alt F. So you're going to be doing squares about, or squares, polygons about this big throughout 
your piece you can do bigger ones like this but it's actually kind of relaxing because it's you can see the form kind of uh, open up before you so like you can actually anticipate okay that's going to be a bigger shape because that's a that's all kind of the same shade and then you can do a smaller one right here so you kind of look for those little idiosyncrasies in, in the sh subject that you're looking at so you try to keep it small polygons like, in like more detailed areas and then larger polygons in the uh, the bigger areas so let me uh s skip ahead here for a little bit and get where it needs to be so you guys can see what i'm talking about when it gets done Okay, so when you get done, now you can put on a different background and hopefully find a low poly background that you can use. So if we go to low poly background, I don't know, find one that you kind of like, I like some of these. Um, so once you find one, just copy it, edit, paste, and you have to put it in the background, view, fit on screen, zoom out a little bit, edit, free transform, so I can make that bigger, and I probably want to crop this, so I don't want... And then if you wanted to, you could actually do some blending options on, on, on your subject, maybe an outer glow or something to that effect, something to make them stand out a little bit. Drop shadow too. I don't know, just play around with it. This is a pretty cool uh, project. Very easy. Actually, it's kind of therapeutic, you know, just uh, forgetting about everything and just focusing on the little colors and polygons you got to cut out. Now, obviously, there's going to be some places you miss, but. You know, try to go through and make sure you get, you know, all the big ones. And then obviously, you want to put your signature on it. If you can find that, that could be in your downloads. If you don't have one, just, I don't know, just type one in. Click on the T. And then find a good font. Definitely sign it, maybe even put the year. I always like to put the year because, you know, just a little memory anchors about certain art. Nope, I can't do that. Well, not with this font anyways. But hopefully uh, you created something you're, you're pretty proud of. Um, when you get done, you want to save it. So file, save a copy. yourself whichever and then you go into Google Classroom and uh, submit it and that's the low poly project